Brightstorm has thousands of high-quality videos covering all major subjects. Please check out more at www.brightstorm.com. All right, we're going to talk about naming uh, alkenes and alkynes. And alkenes and alkynes are types of hydrocarbons. Alkenes contain double bonds, and alkynes contain triple bonds. So let's talk about naming them. Um, I started with methane. We know that meth talks about one carbon. It's a prefix for one carbon. Well, if you have one carbon, it can't be double bond, bonded or single bond or triple bonded to another carbon because there's only one carbon. So there's no such thing as methane. Okay, so we're going to start with ethene. Ethene has is double bonded is two carbons double bonded together. Propene are three um, carbons double bonded together or with double bond within this uh, compound. And let's go, to, let's go down to butene. Well, but, butene is where things get, get uh, sort of confusing. Um, the double bond can be located in several different locations. Because there's four um, carbons, the double, bond can, the double bond can be between any of these carbons. Um, if you go back to propene, if the double bond was here, it's actually the same compound, just flipped around. So the double bond in different places is OK. It's still propene. But let's look at butene um, a little bit more in depth. So if we were to go back to our naming um, our naming rules back when we talked about them in alkanes, um, we would have to number our parent carbon chain. So um, we're going to number our carbons, one, two, three, four. And if we were to name this, we would say the double bond is between the first and second carbon, making it one butene. OK, fair enough. Let's say it was between the, the middle two carbons. We again numbered it, one, two, three, four. And we will call this two butene, because that would tell us that the double bond is between the two and the, the second and the third carbon, making it two butene. Let's go to over here. Let's say it's between the last two carbons, um, mean, meaning we would name it 3-butene. Well, actually, this is exactly the same as this guy over here. It's just flipped, OK? So it's the same exact thing here. It's just turned around. So this is actually the same as 1-butene. So I'm going to put a 1 in front of it. Because if I were to rename, renumber this and make this the first carbon, it would actually, you would notice that it was actually the same thing. One, two, three, four. And in reality, actually, you're going to want the double bond between the lowest carbon. So you're not going to want the double bond between the third one. You're going to want it at the one. So you're going to have to renumber it to make, it, make sure the double bond is um, between the, the lowest number, lowest numbered carbons. OK, so we'll get into this more detail when we go into practice problems. So what about cyclical um, alkenes, things that are um, in a, a, a ring, such as this one? So we know this is pentene. Um, this, they're in between each intersection, which you'll see in the, um, you're actually going to see it looking without the carbons there, but just to let you know, there are carbons at each intersection of these points. Uh, notice that it's a double bond here. So we are going to, um, and there are methyl groups on either side. So we're going to call this a pentene ring. I'm not going to get into how to name it quite yet, but this is a pentene ring. It's a five carbons and there's a double bond between them. Okay. So let's see we get branched. Like when we talked about those branches on the, in the pentene, there are branches that come off. Okay, So we have our parent chain and some branched um, sub -sub substitual groups coming off of it. So what we're going to want to do is, again, just like how we name alkanes, we're going to number our carbons. So our, first, our double bond gets the lowest number. So we notice the double bond is over here. So we're going to start numbering our carbons from the left-hand side to the right-hand side. Okay, So I'm going to say this is carbon 1, 2, Three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so our number and numbering is going to be our double bonds between going to be between the second and the third carbon. Now we have some branching going on. These are methyl groups. Um, so because they are uh, there are two of them, we're going to name this. Um, it's on the sixth and the fourth carbon. So we're going to name it four, six, dimethyl. Um, four, six, don't forget your hyphens, dimethyl two, um, and this is heptene. D four, six, dimethyl two heptene. This tells me that the methyls are in the fourth and the sixth carbon, and the double bond heptene tells me it's a double bonded carbon. Um, it's in the second location, between the second and third. So this tells me all the directions I need to know. When if I, let's say I have more than one uh, double bond within my carbon chain. So for example, I have, and I didn't draw on the hydrogens just for cumbersome reasons. Um, I have this carbon chain. There's seven of them. So I'm going to, it's going to be a prefix of hept, because that's, that's a prefix for seven. Um, 
And you want to make our double bonds at the lowest numbers, as always. So let's say I number it this way, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, going from left to right. Um, my double bonds between the third and the fourth, and then the fifth and the sixth. So I'm going to say 3, 5, hepta, diene. The reason I use the prefix di is because there's two double bonds there. If I had three double bonds within my carbon chain, it would be triene, so on and so forth. Um, so this is 3, 5, hepta, diene. Hepta means 7, di means two double bonds. En means that they're fact that they are double bonds. Um, or it could look like this. It's the same exact, car the same exact um, chain, except it's just flipped the other way. So this would give my carbon chain um, the double bonds between the two and the four. So which would I like better? 3,5-heptadiene or 2,4-heptadiene? This is actually the correct answer because it gives me my numbers in the lowest, um, the lowest numbers of the double bonds within the chain. Okay, let's, let's actually put all this stuff into practice. All right, so let's say we have this compound. It's a little complicated. Um, how are we going to go about naming it? I'm actually going to pick up a different color. Let's pick up uh, purple. Um, we're gonna ha how are we going to go about naming this? Well, first thing, as always, we're going to figure out which is our parent carbon chain. Our parent carbon chain must contain that double bond. So um, I'm going to have it start from down here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. So we know it's a um, heptene. So it's, we know it's a heptene so, because it has seven carbons. Hept is a prefix for seven. En is a, a suffix for double bond. So we know it's a heptene. Oops. Oh, this pen is not working. Heptene. We know the um, double bonds between the third and fourth carbon, so we're going to say three heptene. Okay, so then we're going to talk about our, our branches. We have a methyl group here. We have a methyl group here, and we have an ethyl group, two carbons here. So we're going to do our little ethyl group first because our ethyl group is, is uh, it alphabetically comes before um, methyl. E comes before M in the alphabet. So I'm going to deal with, this is four. Uh, I'm actually going to move this. Four ethyl. Four ethyl. And this is three, six, dimethyl to show me that there are two methyl groups. And we said that was 3-heptene. This is the name of that compound. Notice I put the prefix di for two methyls. Um, I had um, the ethyl come before the methyl because alphabetically that makes sense. There are seven, there are seven carbons in there um, and the parent chain and it ends in E telling me that there's a double bond in there. All right, let's, let's actually draw this one out. We have 3, 4, diethyl, 1, 6, heptadiene. Now, ine tells me the triple bond. Doesn't matter, triple bond, double bond naming is exactly the same thing. It's just it tells you where the tri triple bond is rather than double bond, same exact thing. So heptadiene tells me that there's seven carbons. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, okay. Um, there is uh, two triple bonds, so between the f first and second, and this last one, there are triple bonds, telling me one, six, and the diene tells me that there are two of them. And then at th carbon three and four, because this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, at carbon three and four, there are ethyl groups, which is two carbons, C, C, um, and we'll erase this. And go C, C. All right. This is what your new, this is what your the structure will look like of this, with this name. Okay. So these basically are just great instructions on how to draw my carbon, um, my carbon compound. Now I would just then fill in the rest of them with hydrogens to make sure that it looks complete. Um, yeah. So this would have a hydrogen, and don't forget every carbon just wants four bonds. That's how you just figure it out. Every carbon wants four bonds. So you just kind of fill it all in. And you should be set. That's three, four. Um, I know it can get kind of messy with the hydrogens in there, which is sometimes why I don't draw them. Um, it depends on what kind of structure you do. But anyway, the naming of the uh, alkane alkenes and alkynes is actually pretty straightforward, and it's basically a map to draw to figure out what the actual compound is. Thank you.
Ten by two. I can't do this with you two laughing back there. Work it. Work it. So if we had, no, that's not right. Three coplanar points. So have you ever gotten off an airplane? <laughs> <laughs> that should be. Less than. Yeah. Dang. Is it like 500 degrees in here or what? All right, so when you're in chemistry class, you're gonna be doing a lot of work. You're gonna be bleh, starting over. So as an example, we could consider like you've got a chain hanging from two, um, two fix. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>